okay so let's start it so what we want to study is manifold right so and where does it come from right or the other where did it uh, come from so i mean study of uh, r i mean real number r2 and this this is done long back right so differentiability once differentiability uh, was uh, was was introduced by uh, by newton uh, then of course a uh, lot of application came up and those were over r and then the i mean it was natural to uh, generalize to r2 and so on but then in <clears throat> in uh, i guess 17 17th century and 18th century so 18th 19th rather yeah so let's say around uh, end of say end, end of 18th century so let's say around uh, 1790s to 1827 something like that so around that time not exactly i don't remember exactly so around that time around this time carl frederick gauss studied surfaces right so of course, uh, in the before that, people have studied about about curves. Most of you have seen in curves and surfaces course. So it was it was uh, Gauss who studied uh, uh, studied surfaces, and what was interesting is here in in this study of surfaces, he used local coordinates freely which means by that time so i mean i think there is a paper around this this state uh, where he used uh, local coordinates so 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 that means he knew about this local coordinate which means about the notion of chart. Of course, not the name, but the notion. Oh, sorry. Next, uh, then comes Riemann. So around the same same time. Yeah, around, let's say, what, what would be the correct time? Around 30s. Riemann so the story of Riemann was, uh, was was like that so so he wanted to work with uh, work with Gauss and uh, I think in his uh, in his inhabilation lecture he gave three topics, three topics to Gauss. Okay, but three more, all, all three were very interesting and all three became fundamental later on. So the third one was, third one was uh, named as on the hypothesis under the underlined, under uh, geometry lies, something like that. So there, what he did, what he, what he, what he, this is just few pages papers. I mean, uh, few pages, pages, I think six, six to eight, something like that. 
and what he uh, did there, he tried the generalization of Gauss's work to higher dimensional object. The notion of manifold actually came from this Riemann's article. The translation of that article is still of interest, is of interest to people. And it is, it is very nicely written. So Riemann, so there he, he, he wrote his thinking, of course, not very rigorous way, because the axiomatic definition of manifold was not known till then. It was much, much later, around, around 100 years, after 100 years, it was formalized. But I mean, he, he knew what he wanted to mean. And he wrote down the ideas. And later on, we uh, actually remaining geometry developed from there. Just six to eight pages. Very small paper of Riemann. I don't think Riemann has written another page, paper in, in, in geometry. All right. So here, the notion there was there is a term in Germany which which is generalized, which is uh, translated in English as manifold, and the term was in Riemann's uh, article. Okay, so 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 Riemann contributed quite a bit here, and in uh, it it uh, axiomatic definition came around 1931. So by I think Wavelin and Whitehead. So this is axiomatic definition. Manifold. All right. So, few historical remark, and of course, this is this is not their, I mean, own idea. They have just written it down, written things down. It is actually a lot of people have contributed towards that, and then it gets formalized. All right. So, next one. So. So we now actually we now want to uh, define, right? So, so define first thing is topological manifold. Right. So what do you think uh, a topological manifold would be? Any guess? Of course, it should be topological space. What else do, do you think uh, I should satisfy? Any cases? All right. So in any case, uh, so <clears throat> Of course, it should be a topological space, and then it should be locally, it should look like locally as Rn, right? So first thing is locally Euclidean. So this is, this is number one. So what does it mean? So a topological space
m is said to be locally Euclidean if for all point p in m there exists a neighborhood up of p and and what and a homeomorphism well i i would just uh, don't put p here there will be a lot more notations so it will be complicated so let me call it just p uh, just u and a homeomorphism p from u into 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 rn so you would go to an open subset of rn uh, maybe yeah let me just put the image as as follows u to v onto this open subset of Rn so locally Euclidean comes with with a dimension so of dimension n so this n this n is actually this this one so this this n is same as this n this two has to be same. All right. So this is this is open. So a locally Euclidean space is a topological space such that for every point P, you have a neighborhood which actually uh, goes to some open subset of R in under a homeomorphism. So this part is also important. You have a homeomorphism. You have a homeomorphism. OK, so let me uh, get a few examples here. So, so example of locally Euclidean space, it's first thing is Rn, right? Second thing, suppose so this looks like Rn, right? It's just plain paper. We just pretend it can make it a cylinder. Is it locally Euclidean? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, it is. It is. It is locally Euclidean. Increase the volume a little bit. Suppose I do this. Like this. Is it locally Euclidean? Is it is this local Euclidean? Think of it. And let me go forward. Sir. Yes. For the cylinder, what yes, about yes. the boundary? Like the upper part and lower part? Oh, you think of infinite uh, cylinder at this point. We'll come to that, what mm -hmm. happens to uh, the boundary also. Those things are called manifold with boundary. 
yeah those are okay. those are important as well but for the infinite cylinder at this point you can consider so those are locally euclidean try to find a map right try to find a map that does this all, all right so so this is lo locally euclidean second thing is house drop right this you know for p q in m p not equal to q there exist neighborhoods u p and u q p and q such that u p intersection u q is empty there is um, nothing much in that third thing is um second control so m has a countable basis right so let us go back to this uh, the previous board so you are trying to de define topological manifold so i put three condition right here so so now definition a topological manifold any fold is a topological space of dimension n sorry of dimension n is a is a topological space satisfying above three conditions so which means house drop second countable locally euclidean space of dimension n example one so r r n with identity well so this is first thing of course rn rn is a <coughs> topological space second countable so how do you prove rn is second countable these are very basic i will not never say this numbers of are. rational numbers with the rational radius 1 by n radius right right actually gives a basis right and uh, it is of course house drop yeah right so how do you show it is house drop somebody else if we take two points and the distance between them is r then we can consider the r by two balls right open ball with r by two centered at those points that gives you um house drop condition and uh, what about this local euclidean identity map right so identity is the map it's actually global euclidean these are euclidean spaces so rn rn is a topological manifold the second thing is now you consider the following Say graph of 
the function y equal to x square right so what is it so over r what is it it's a car yeah it's a curve of course it's a curve which what curve it's manifold of dimension 1 okay yeah manifold of dimension 1 who said that me sir oh okay rakal oh no 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 i mean you can't rec recognize this curve the parabola right so this is parabola so how did it look like yeah like this so i equal to x square now is it is it house drop Is it house drop? So shouldn't it be an upward parabola? Y equals x squared. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. So y is always positive, so I cannot be negative here. Yeah, yeah. Right. So this is. Right, so upward pointing parabola. So I equal to x square. That is true. So now, how's it drop? Yes, Good. sir. If you take two points, you can compare the x coordinate. All right, you can compare the. So, what are the open sets? Here. So you look at the yeah, yeah, one at a time. Yeah, how set you are saying? So take the same open sets in R two and then uh, like take intersection with this space. It'll be open. Good. So, so you see, open sets. If, if something lies in R, and open sets comes from the induced topology from R, and, so which means the subspace topology. So, open set will be something like intersection with this ball. So, which means this this part. This will be an open set. Right, so if you have two points, let's say another color, two points here and here, you can again look at the distance, as Rachel said in, in the Euclidean case, look at the distance and look at, I mean, a ball of radius smaller than the distance by two. So you get this kind of balls. So the open sets here could be this and this. Yeah. 
so these are disjoint so that gives you local euclidean uh, sorry this gives you hausdorffness and what about second, second countable sir again induced right 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 so this comes from again topology from r2 so your these balls are uh, open sets are given by these balls or uh, these open sets of r2 intersected intersected with this curve parabola so open sets itself in r2 has uh, has countable basis so you have countable basis here in the subspace topology as well all right now next thing is local euclidean so this part this is hausdorff is okay second countable countable is also okay and what about local euclidean yeah mukul raj you have not seen you you are saying that that time so tell me here what will be the map here that will show local euclidean the projection projection to projection to the the r the x coordinate yeah r is not here yeah sorry right? so you need to focus on first you need to see a line and then you should say that projection on that so that map local euclidean comes from this x y in this parabola let's say p comes goes to x yes i'm class to for us all right so this gives you actually globally euclidean so this is this is this is a homeomorphism right yeah is this a homeomorphism yeah this is right this is a homeomorphism from p to r so it is it is it's at every point the one map actually works so this is locally euclidean of so p is a p is a locally euclidean space of dimension 1 so here p is a topological manifold of dimension <clears throat> one any question till now these are very very basic okay let's see one more example so example 3 this is also in, in lower dimension so consider this yeah so i equal to mod x what do you think about this
I think it should be a topological manifold. Right. It should be a topological manifold. The problem is here is a corner. Only difference from the previous one is there is a corner here. So this could be a problem, but in this case, it's not a problem. So why? Because, so what do you need to show? House drop is the same as example two. Second countable. Example, same as example two. And local Euclidean. Again, projection map. Again, x, y equals to x gives a homeomorphism. from the curve to R. Yeah, is this fine? All right. Example four. The set S is S is X comma zero X is in R union zero comma Y Y is in R. So these are the axes in and of two axes. So is it a topological manifold? Because the origin will cause the problem. Origin? I mean, the origin will cause a problem. We can't find an open set around the origin, which is locally. Yeah. Right, right. So, how do you see that? Yeah, can you prove that the origin is a problem? So Rakhal's comment was that there is a problem here in this 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 part. So which means in this part, locally around this region. So other thing is just for if you take other point, you just give you so x comma zero goes to x is the map, right, for other points, except the origin. So the claim is that S is not locally Euclidean at 0, 0. Uh, yeah. Can you prove it? Sir, as moving one point makes it disconnected into four components. I, right. I don't think that will happen if it's locally gluten. Yeah. So you don't think it, it doesn't happen. What does it mean? I mean, if it's homeomorphic to like small, uh, small, like small interval, suppose, then if I just pick out the one point, this is getting disconnected into four points. And then also one point will be taken out. And 
it will be discounted into two components. Right. Right. So this is the argument. So this argument by now should be very standard to all of you. At removing, so if if there is a homeomorphism, you can remove one point and its image. It will again be a homeomorphism. Does everybody understand what I may what I said? So if there is a homeomorphism from two topological spaces in R, let's say subset of R n, and you if it is a homeomorphism, then you can remove one point and its image. It it will again be a homeomorphism. So if s is locally euclidean at euclidean at 0 0 then there exist u containing 0 0 in a root such that u and 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 map phi and phi from u to r such that, well, I open subset bar, homeomorphism into, so homeo into such that such that, such, of course, now you, since you, you, you can choose you connected such that phi of u is an open interval. Right? So it means which means you have one cross this side and you have an interval in this side and you have a map phi homeomorphism. So what you do, you you actually remove this. Remove this. So a point will be removed from here. But then here, number of components. Four, and here number of components two, right? So under homeomorphism, number of components should be same, right? Does everybody know the proof? So this is an exercise in topology under homeomorphism. The number of components get preserved to so prove that. This is a very simple exercise. Any question? Okay. Okay. Since we have a uh, few minutes, so let us. So now, from this topological manifold, we want to define a manifold, a smooth manifold, a differentiable manifold, where the notion of differentiable function would make sense, right? So the notion of uh, differentiable function, we want to introduce the notion of differentiable function. But for a local uh, Euclidean space or in a topological manifold, you don't know. We don't know whether we can do that. So we need something special. 
and that is what uh, uh, so that was that that will be called as differentiable structure so so this is something called differentiable structure structure so here the main objects are charts so charts so this is consist of so m first of all m a topological manifold so charts consist of a neighbor a, an open set and a map t so it's just like local euclidean right so u v is from u to some open subset of rn homeo right these are charts so this local euclidean spaces has this charts now we need to understand this situation for example you have certain space here which is m and you have a chart let's say this is u1 and this is u2 or let's say u and v that will be better to understand v and let's suppose this is going to rn by a map phi and this is going to go to rn by psi right now what happens to this intersection so what happens here here so that is what we want to see at this point which is called compatibility condition so let me draw the picture again so this picture is will be quite important so this is u this is v this is phi this phi of u which is lying in rn psi psi of v is also lying in rn right so if you if you like you can consider this to be just balls and now note the following this part would map somewhere here right and this part would map somewhere here under psi and this is under phi now if we if we try to consider this following from here to here so what would be the map if you want to consider map from phi u to phi v not not of course the, not the whole only the red part so which means this part this part let me write it again so this part what is this part this is phi u intersection b and this part this is psi u intersection b and this is of course this is u intersection b right an image of it now from here to here so how do you go first you will go here under phi inverse and then we will come here by psi so this map will be psi compose 
Y inverse, right? Now this is a map from some open subset of Rn to some open subset of Rn, right? It's a homeomorphism. The differentiability makes sense here. So, C infinity compatibility is as follows. So two charts, U phi and B psi is called C infinity compatible if psi compose phi inverse is a C infinity smooth function all right so this map what do you want this map is differentiable in our case c infinity so we will not consider c case of manifold we will we'll consider actually uh, c infinity which means all the partial derivatives exist right and continuous yeah Yeah, is this fine? So another notion. So there will be a lot of notion here. So Atlas. In Atlas is a collection of Atlas of what? Atlas of of a topological manifold, but it is makes sense in a local Euclidean space. Topological manifold. M is a collection U alpha, phi alpha, alpha is in some index set of charts such that M is covered by this chart, this, this open sets. Okay? And And any two charts in the collection is C infinity compatible. All right. So we'll go. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll give examples and we'll discuss more about these things. So till now. We have this one. So we have few notions. First thing is local Euclidean. Local Euclidean, topological manifold, and then chart, and then atlas. Right? These four notions. So try to find few examples on your own. And next time we'll give a few examples. So the more examples you'll see, the more comfortable you'll be. Okay. Okay then. If you have any question, you can ask. Any question?